Hello everyone, how is it going? So today we are trying to detect some wild fires, especially using some smoke detection, smoke data set detection. So we are using YOLO V5 object detection library for this particular purpose. And there are some images of smoke that we are training this on. And you can see how the object is trained, how it's so nicely being able to detect smoke from even far off distances. And it can be trained and we are showing some sort of images and videos right here for you. So let's go into the code. Let's see how we can run this for ourselves. So we are going to be using the RoboFlow data set and it's available here. I'll put the link for them as well here in the description. So what you're doing is the first step is to clone the repository and install all the requirements. And this is something where you're getting it from the Ultralytics YOLO V5 guys. So you're downloading all the repositories and then installing it. And the next step is to download the data set from RoboFlow. So in, in our case, we're using the smoke data set, of course. So the smoke data set is somewhere right here where you can, I think it's on the very top. Yeah, wildfire smoke data set. So if you click on this, it has about 737 images. And if you click on the raw over here, you can always go in and then download all this repository. So I'm using the YOLO V5 version, right? So that's the reason I have YOLO V5. You have other data sets. So the good thing about the RoboFlow guy is they have all this form, the YOLO 5, the data set is already made in the form of YOLO V5. So whatever YOLO V5 needs, the way the images should be aligned, especially the annotations, the bounding boxes, those are already arranged in that format. And the annotations are available, going to be available in a config.yaml file. And it ha it'll have the information of where the data set is, what are the bounding boxes, what the, all the information that you need regarding the data set will also be downloaded. So it makes it very easy for us. And if you press continue, it will open up a new page, a new folder where it will give you the link for you to download it as a for a Jupyter Notebook file project. So the first option would be to download the link as a Jupyter Notebook. Just copy that link. Uh, I'm not allowed to show as per the YOLO, the, the guys, they don't want to share that code with anyone. So you, because it's part of your own code, it's part of your own file. So you can see coming back to the smoke detection data set, you're just putting them down here. And now the next step is to open the data.yaml file. And this is the file that you get from the RoboFlow guys. And it's very, very useful and very helpful because the training data set is going to open this data.yml file and see where the training and validation sets are. And it'll also see what are the, what are the different objects available in that image data set. So it's going to be available here. And the next thing, what they will do is they'll download, they'll create these three folders for you. One is the test data set, the training and the validation. And this is all part of the project and it will be very important. So if you open up any of the valid data set, you'll have images and labels. Images are where you have information, all the images and labels are where you have the annotation boxes, the bounding boxes for the smokes available in that, that we'll be using for our training purposes. Now, once we are done with that, uh, we uh, first thing is we are opening the existing data.yaml file. So data.yaml file, which is available right here from the YOLO v5. So YOLO v5 has its own data.yaml file, and this is part of the YOLO v5 5as. If you click on models, let me not make it more complicated for you. For now, just understand that we are trying to create our own config file on our own model. So the, initially we open up what the, the YOLO v5 already comes up with, the default, the, what the data set that they had used. And this is the configuration file for them. So this is nothing but the neural network that they had used for their own thing. Now we are creating our own our own data set, our own configuration file. And that will be present in this custom underscore YOLO v5s file. And this is where we are changing our own configuration. We are creating our own configuration. It's not too much of a difference, but just based on the number of images, based on the type of data set that we are using. So this is just the configuration, the custom v5 configuration that we are using for our project. Once that is done, we come to the next data set where we are 
where we are going to be training the data set. So you can see that it's using the train.py file, which is already part of the YOLO v5 project. And we are just letting the application know that our models are present in this custom v5s model. So the, it's going to be using the uh, the basic configuration instead of the basic configuration is going to be using the custom the configuration files that we made and we are creating we are also asking it to save all the information in this weights folder so if it will take a few seconds depending on the number of images that you're using and in our case it took about nine minutes so you can see that it's taken nine minutes 43 seconds and since we are using on a collab version it took us nine minutes uh, you also want to make sure your runtime your change runtime is gpu based so that will make it a bit, a bit easier of course now coming back coming down to the images so how do you test the images in this particular case so you can see the weights are available uh, in the previous step, it will show that opt optimizer stripped from runs, expo, and this is the path for the final weights file. It's about 14.7 MB. So it just copy this file, copy this path file, and then paste it here. So after the weights portion. So you're just letting the image, you, you're just letting the system know that where your weights file, where your custom weights file is available. And that is where it is available. It'll just go ahead and run it. Now you're asking, it'll ask you where the images are. In our case, since we are testing it on a known data set, it's already available here. So it's under this test folder, test, and under images. So I have all my test images in this folder. And for that purpose, I'm having, uh, I'm using the two dots to let the application know that it's in the previous directory because right now it's under the YOLO v5 directory. So we're just oh, letting the project know that we need to come back and come back to the main root directory and then open the test. And under test, there are images. So you're just using that to detect. Once that is done, we're using this function, we're using IPython display just to open up all the image files and go one by one and then display it here. So you can see that it's displaying each each all each of those images in the, among the test data set and displaying it here for us. So this is how the images are done. And now if you want to do it on the video, the next step is for the video where you're using again the detect.py file and you're using the same weights folder. And just instead of the file name for the images, you're just now providing the file name for the video file. So for the video, of course, you'll have to upload a video. Just open up this for, click on this one and it'll ask you where your folder is. So it ask for the folder, wherever your folder is. So I have these videos right here and I used my videos from here basically. So you're just uploading it out here and then you're just providing whatever the file name is. In my game case, it is video.4, video4, video3. This will not be available for you because this is something which I had to upload after runtime since we are not using the repository for this particular case. But if at all you need it, you can always upload it right here. And it's very simple. The images will be, of course, available for you, but the video files will not be. And it's very simple. You just download the video file and just upload it up here and then you provide the video file name and just press play it'll go ahead and run all the code and it will save the output in this particular folder and where is this folder just click on yolo v5 and go under inference and under inference there is output and that is where your output is so if you were to do a video file and the, this whole data set would be erased and it will have a video so for example if i press let me come back to this and let me run this video section where we are going to run this video file and let me refresh this output. So instead of uh, having images, uh, it just now we saw it was filled with images. So if I open this back again, instead of images, it will now have a video file for us. So it's you can see now it's replaced with the video4.mp4 and it will be the same same name as the original file name was. So you can see how it is there. It's, it has done the video processing for us. It uh, took, if I found about 554 frames in the video, it ran through all these images and then displayed the output for us. 
So that's about it. It's as simple as that. I hope uh, this video helped you. This is nothing but your custom YOLO V5 object detection. With that, take care, stay safe, bye-bye.